Okay, so we're gonna be looking at the quad dominant um, breakdowns. Um, number one, okay, number one is unstable. When we look at the way that we load up the drive leg and we compare it to loading up in a hip hinge, hey yo, hip hinge, okay, and we look at the way that we load up in a quad, think about it in terms of the weight room. You're gonna be able to pull from a deadlift more weight produce more force into the ground from this hip hinge movement than you are probably from a squat movement, right? 99% of the people probably agree with that. That's a very simple way to look at it, right? So when we look at the stability, we know that we want to have a stable drive leg. Again, job of the, the responsibility of the drive leg is to absorb, stabilize, and store. All three of those require a ton of stability in the single leg. So if we look at just what's more superior in terms of stability, tip hinging. So a lot of times guys, the quad dominant load, they have a collapsed drive leg, right? You'll see a lot of screenings on that as well. So when you have a collapsed drive leg, you don't accomplish the three tasks of, of the drive leg mechanics, absorb, produce, and store. You leak a ton of energy throughout your drive phase. You're not putting energy into the ground and you're not gonna be able to get that energy that you've lost back up through the kinetic chain out to your fingertips, right? So when we look at the quad dominant load, a lot of times, obviously the guys that do it and still produce high power output are, are, are efficient at this, but guys that do quad dominant load and you'll see a breakdown, they load quad dominant and the knee kind of just collapse forward. It doesn't absorb, doesn't stabilize, doesn't store, okay? Remember, when the force is greater than the capacity, the capacity of the quad is gonna be less superior than the capacity of the glutes. The glutes are our biggest muscle group on our body, so we want to make sure that those are actively engaged throughout the delivery, right? So hopefully that piece makes sense. Um, and then I wanna say, uh, potential solutions to counter that is work towards the hip hinge. I, I said this earlier, like work towards obtaining the hip hinge movement. Now, if that doesn't work and you're, you're saying like, oh, I'm too stressed out, then move on. Work towards increasing your stability in the quads. Work towards, um, you know, having the ability to stabilize even if you are a quad dominant loader, right? So make sure that you can increase your capacity of your way that you drive leg load. Okay, um, hopefully that makes uh, sense. Um, also, I said this earlier as well, if that's another piece that you're struggling with in terms of obtaining a hip hinge movement, just accelerate, right? To produce velocity, it's force times acceleration. Quad dominant loading and you're seeing these breakdowns, you're not gonna be producing as much force, then increase your acceleration, right? We talk about this with the personal identification system, uh, touched on a little bit, like, you know, there's a lot of people that are in the big leagues that produce 100 miles an hour and they don't do one thing that great, but then they do like another thing just exceptionally well. And you can be that guy in terms of the way that you load your drive leg, okay? Um, two, uh, this is a big one. This is, this is the biggest one, I mentioned it earlier, okay? So drive leg misdirection, okay? So with quad dominant load, that knee kind of takes us this way towards third base if you're a righty, towards first base if you're a lefty, all right? So our direction is typically um, a result, is a byproduct of, of the way that you load your drive leg, okay? Uh, front side has to do with it a little bit as well. So due to this, this misdirection, that could result in potentially early trunk rotation. And we'll dive into this more uh, as we progress into the upper body mechanics, but we want to delay trunk rotation until our point of front foot strike or our anchor point. Okay, this allows us to increase separation. Separation, 80% of our velocity has to do with separation. So we wanna make sure that that piece is not being compensated, right? We wanna make sure that we have that down because uh, that one's, that's, one, that, that's gonna be the most important when we're looking at velocity, okay? Um, just think about it in terms of, uh, I'll probably have a screening on this as well just to give you a visual, visual of what that looks like but just put it simply, you load up the quad, okay? You descend, your direction takes you this way. Remember, the body is gonna fight alignment. It's gonna fight linear, right? So if your direction is going this way, we talked about this earlier with why the hip rotation should be initiated earlier. If your body is going this way, it's gonna be like, whoa, dude, we gotta get back up like that way. So we have to pull. So a lot of times you'll see guys that, that load up the quad and then have an aggressive pull 
to make make uh, to clear way to get back to neutral and that pull is usually happening early and if they pull then you'll see a couple different things in regards to disconnecting early and um, decreasing their ability to separate their lower and upper body and that's how we create stretch that's how we create separation there's this fly it's killing me so in terms of uh potential solutions for for that one okay hammer progressions for segmentation make sure that the ability to segment our lower body rotation and our upper body rotation we're, we're checking the box we're, we're hammering that okay i have a lot of kids that come to me and say oh i have a breakdown with like my separation i know my hip shoulder separation isn't good well what do you do to help it what do you do to train the motor pattern no I just throw like you know your body is moving because of its understanding of how your essentially giving your brain that information of how you've moved throughout your entire life. Now, if it's a breakdown, if it's a, it's an inefficient movement pattern, we need to reinstill that. And it's not going to happen overnight. So that's why I say, like when I say hammer patterns, hammer reps, like you need to train new movement patterns, right? And that doesn't happen overnight. You need to make sure that you're intentional with that process. So um, in regards to that second breakdown with the early trunk rotation, hammer segmentation progressions, okay? To get your body and brain connected to understand that this is how we're supposed to move, right? This is how we move, okay? Um, you can set up on the rubber, rubber glove side. That could potentially help. Um, relax glove side and front side counterbalance. Okay, so what I mean by that is sometimes you'll see guys, that same quad dominant load takes them this way. Those are similar um, occasions with guys that have a super aggressive glove side. So guys that try to do like the Tim Linscombe and shoot it out. If you're shooting out closed, and again, this is okay because I know what the, the reasoning is. We want to keep like trunk counter rotation. But if you don't have front side and trunk stability and you go to shoot glove side like this way, what's your body going to do? It's going to go that way because you don't have the trunk stability to go, okay, I can still counter rotate, but I can still progress linear. So relax glove side, maybe even play around with a little Garrett Cole, like point glove side, little Zach Grinke point glove side and see if that can keep your trunk neutral and keep your drive leg loading this way. Maybe, who knows? Um, and delay hand separation, actually. Delay hand separation. So when we separate our hands, right? When our, when our throwing hand is separated from our glove, that could be another indication, um, another thing to look at in terms of potential solutions to breakdowns, honestly. Because if you delay hand separation, you know, say in midway through your drive phase, shoot, what's the odds that your, your trunk's gonna wanna shoot into rotation as soon as you separate, right? Usually when you separate, it's boom, counter rotation. So if you delay that separation, now you can just make up for lost time. Um, one more note that I wanna say in regards to this topic is with the glove side, okay? So my personal uh, opinion when it comes to this, uh, as far as the loading of the drive leg, your glove side, your front side, it can either help aid in achieving a hip hinge. We see a lot of guys that, that accomplish you know, hip hinge load extremely well, and you'll see them shoot this way with their glove side and then shoot back with their hips, right? Think about it, if I was gonna do a pistol squat and I, and I had two counterbalance weights here, I'm gonna be able to do that pistol squat a lot more effectively than if I were just through space with nothing, right? And if I was like back here. So, Glove side can help aid as a counterbalance to achieve this hip hinge, right? Or, like I mentioned earlier, it could be a detriment to taking your direction this way. This is where we need to make sure, we talked about mobility and stability importance. This is where we need to make sure that we have the required stability of the front side of the trunk to accomplish these, these movements, okay? So, all right guys, quad dominant breakdowns, there you go. Hopefully that helps.